Howdy folks, Greyhawk 4 4 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer. Today is going to be a gaming blog. We're going to talk about first edition campaign and we're going to talk about the Pathfinder campaign. Uh, but I'd like to focus a little bit on the use of props uh, in D&D campaigns. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so... Um, to start off with the first edition campaign, um, our uh, our group has uh, d had decided to go another uh, foray into the Temple of Elemental Evil, and for this particular session, one of the uh, one of the players, uh, our buddy Brad, uh, has a son who's in college, uh, and he was down from college, so he has played with us before. He plays when he's in town. Uh, and he joined us again. So he was, uh, he had rolled up a cleric um, to, uh, for this particular uh, um, session. And when they showed up, when everybody showed up at the table and everything, um, they kind of, I think they had an idea of how they wanted to introduce him to the party and everything. But it doesn't really work like that, see, because cause I'm DMing. So I already had an idea how he was going to get introduced to the party. So, um, what I did was, uh, I knew they were going to be going back uh, into the temple. I, I guessed that they were going to go back in the temple. And uh, going under that assumption uh, worked out because I had, uh, I had planned that they would find his this cleric, they would find him, when they entered the temple, uh, they would find him not too far inside, um, in an area they'd already been, um, they find his body unconscious there, and uh, in in front of him uh, is a like a bundle, um, like a, a satchel kind of a thing, uh, and I used this uh, like this canvas bag here. Um, that was the closest thing I had that you know uh, to use for it. So I had this canvas bag, and I I put items in here and made an actual bundle out of it. And had and explained to them that he was unconscious on the floor, and then in front of him on the floor there was this bundle. And uh, the twist, of course, was that when they got him, he started to come to consciousness, uh, but he had no memory of anything. He didn't know how he got there. Um, he 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 kind of remembered his name, who he was, and so forth, but he had no memory of how he got where he, where they. He didn't even know where they were. He didn't know any idea how he got there. Or anything, and you know they mentioned to him about this bundle, thinking that it was his, and he's like, "That ain't mine," you know. Of course, it could be. He doesn't remember, but in his mind, it, it wasn't. So, so we have the, uh, for lack of a better term, we have this underhanded. Um, well, I mean, he's a he's a thief, so he's playing a he's playing a uh, uh, assassin, um, illusionist, uh, dual class character. And uh, so he, of course, sees the bundle. Once he hears that, he goes over and starts investigating it. And I had several items in there, uh, some of which I had these. Uh, these are really nice looking mock gems that I found uh, somewhere. And so I had three of these. These three here, these three different colors. This one, it's not really showing up on camera too well, but it is different than the, it is different than the clear. So, uh, here you have the clear, which is like a diamond, and then this is more of a pink, um, which I described as a topaz um, type color. So anyway, he finds those three, and he also finds this string of beads. Um, in in the bundle and he decides he's going to try and pilfer those without being seen so he I had made him roll um, I made everybody roll like a perception type check a wisdom check um, and had him roll for pickpockets and the rolls all went in his favor so he was successful in pilfering these items without anybody seeing them they didn't know anything about it um, in addition to that, um, I had 
there was a, a scroll in there that is actually a three-page poem that they assume is a clue, um, maybe a clue, for the Temple of El Menli, of solving the mystery of the Temple of El Menli. They have no idea, but this was in the bundle, so they had to read this and try and decipher it. Um, and then the last thing that I had in there um, was, I had this little, this little case, in, this little leather uh, pouch in here, and actually I had it upside down there, but anyway, it opens up like this, and inside there are six of these vials, which have, and there are, there are six different colors, um, and they have some type of material inside, um, and they have no idea what they are. Um, so they, of course, asked the, there was a, there's a mage in the group, the NPC mage, um, and they asked her, and she decides to uncork one um, and see if she can tell anything by the aroma, if it's like, because it's not liquid, it's something else in there. And and I'll show you um, for another for for reference purposes. I'll show you another one so you know that. So see, this one's brown. So um, and like I said, there's six different colors in here um, that I had put in here. And w of course, once she does that, she uh, the the mage says, "Well, that smells." Uh, Unmistaking, unmistakingly like an owl bear. Um, and she knew that because she had had a previous encounter with an owl bear that she survived, where the owl bear has kind of that that uh, hug attack that, where it grasps you, you know, and everything. And she remembered that aroma from from that encounter, and uh, she said this. That's what that smells like, you know. So that's all they know at this point. Um, they ended up opening up the other ones and smelling them and seeing if they could identify them. And what they have no idea what it is. So they're already on this. They have this one task that they're completing for the, as we call him, the the crazy ass wizard um, Meslo, who has sent them out looking for specific uh, anatomy body parts and things that he wants to try and use for experiments. Um, and so they're, they've, they've voiced to me that that's their plan, is they're going to take this stuff back to him and see if he can identify it, find out what it is, and so forth. Um, so that's where that is. So they don't know what's happening with that. They, you know, the, the gnome pilfered all this stuff. Um, they do make it back and sell, the gnome sells the gems. And which, by the way, went for about seven thousand gold for those gems. Um, but no one in town could tell them what these were. They're not. They they radiate magic, very strong magic. But the mage in town, not the crazy mage that they're working for. Different. He's in a different area completely. Um, but the town they went to, Devers, no one could tell them what these are because they're not. Uh, the jeweler said they're not jewelry. Um, these are not rubies or anything, garnets or anything like that, they're not gems, um, and the mage didn't, said it radiated magic, and so they left uh, these beads with the mage in Devers to see if he could identify them, um, so they don't know, they still don't know anything about those, um, they've read the, the poem, and they're trying to decipher that, and they have these vials of whatever that they've got to get get back to Meslo to see what he can tell them about that. That was all, and I worked all that together, um, and they, and the other thing they don't know is they don't know who that bundle belonged to. Um, all they know is that there was this cleric there, um, found with it, the cleric says it's not his, 
Um, and he's slowly getting his memory back. At the end of the session, he had remembered, gotten to the point where he could remember that he had, he believes that he was in a tavern, there was a, a mage in there, and they got into some kind of a disagreement or something, and uh, the last thing he remembered was the mage said something like, oh, well, I needed to volunteer anyway. Zap. And that was the last thing that he remembered. So, there you go. That's all they know. Um, now, the other thing, while they were in this room, in the main room of the temple, uh, they actually have a hireling with them. Fred, they call him. It's not a name that I gave him, but they call him Fred. And they had decided there's a, there's a, there's a well that is in the floor that they have descended before and there's actually an opening halfway down that they've gone into and they ended up having to fight some undead and so forth but they knew it went even further down and they knew that there was aromas coming up from there some kind of smoke um, incense type smell coming up from there and they couldn't tell what was down there so our wonderful gnome friend the assassin illusionist decided that his plan would be to tie a rope around Fred and lower Fred down. But of course, all along, his plan was to let Fred go <laughs> and let Fred fall down in there. And so, um, that he took, he used the moment when they were all passing these around to try and identify them and smell them and, and figure out what they were uh, to uh, let go of the rope because the rest of them had kind of lost focus and everything. And he's, oh, rope slipped. And of course, something at that point, once Fred falls and lands in this pit down there, uh, some type of entity uh, enters into the room. There is a, for lack of a better term, a cyclone type effect. Uh, everything starts blowing like a tornado down there and everything. And then some creature comes along and Fred is taken away. And that's all they know. So, um, while, and, and while all that's happening, they get waylaid by a random encounter of some bandits that try to take them down. And uh, they end up winning the fight, of course, but it wasn't as easy as they thought it was going to be. So they decide, okay, um, let's, let's try something else. And they decide to leave and head back um, to, uh, to Deavers because the, the barbarian... Uh, she needed training um, to to level up, and um, they were wanting to maybe look into this a little bit, and the gnome wanted to look into these and so forth. Um, so they go back uh, to town, and I'll, be, I'll spare you all the details, but they left off in town, and they still have to make it back to Meslo for these. Um, but uh, nevertheless... Uh, Fred was sacrificed, basically, and um, they found this cleric who's now slowly getting his memory back um, that maybe at some point can shed some light on who this bundle belongs to, um, at who that wizard might have been, and, and so forth, that, that, uh, that, so that took him as a, quote, volunteer, you know. Um, and so that's kind of where we left off. Um... In the Pathfinder campaign, the DM had, uh, in that campaign, I'm not DMing, um, and I play a rogue in that one, uh, he had devised this quite ingenious uh, puzzle room type of a thing. You walk in and there was several different doors, one had a foot on it, one had a hand on it, one had a brain on it, one had a heart on it, and... You had to kind of figure out, and there was there was riddles involved. So at first we had to um, uh, we had to uh, solve these riddles, and then we had to enter each door. And we were all under the assumption that we all had to go through each portal. There was a portal at, um, in each room, and uh, that we'd have to go through these portals and then uh, complete the the tests, the challenges that were in there and come out the other side um, to be successful. So 
we did a few of them, two or three of them, I can't remember, and then there was one, and it was the Constitution room, and it was just me and the fighter that went through uh, the portal for some reason, and my rogue died. Uh, he did not make it, because his Constitution is crappy, and uh, he couldn't make any rolls, and there was a part where you had to swim under water, and uh, so you had to hold your breath for a very long time, and you had to keep making skill checks uh, to hold your breath, and he failed that horribly. And then there was another, even after that, then there was some other, it might have been like a poison mist that you had to do constitution checks for that. He died. Um, so uh, that's where we left that, and I'm probably going to roll up another character for Pathfinder for that campaign. Um, I would like to, I don't have, have no idea if the rest of the party has any interest if they're going to try and get my character resurrected um, or raised or whatever. Um, I would prefer to keep playing that character. I have no idea um, what's going to happen there. But in the, just in case, I think I'm going to roll up. Um, I very rarely ever play a magic user type character. So I may do that. Um, just to do something different. I, I've, I've played a lot of, you know, I've played barbarians and rangers and rogues and so forth, but I think I may decide to do a, uh, um, a magic user type character, sorcerer, wizards, who knows. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure which direction that's going to go. Um, but, and, and just in case you're wondering about these, um, basically what I did to make those is, um, I bought some uh, different colored sand, uh, decorative sand, and then um, for the aromas, I used Adventure Scents. Um, I'll put a link below uh, to their website. I've talked about them before. They make um, their scented beads um, that add uh, immersion to your tabletop role-playing game. Because they have scents like uh, Wizard's Tower, Enchanted Forest, etc., etc., and um, I had gotten a sample pack from them that they had sent me when I did the very first video. I talked about them. They had sent me that to to try them out, and so what I did is I put some of those in each of those a different scent in each of those vials. And I tried to match it up uh, uh, based upon what's in there, and there'll be more. When when we discover the story behind these and everything, I'll talk some more about it. But bottom line, that's how I made those. So, um, and I got the little vials on Amazon, and uh, the sand I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, so, uh, I like to use props. I think it adds immersion to the game. Um, and it was really fun to see them, you know, um, the, the gnome open that bundle. And the fact that he was able to pilfer all the, the shinies. Um, and so he kept that gold, 7,000 gold. That, and, and he still has the beads that he, he dropped off at the, uh, the mage in, um, in Deavers to see if he can figure out what those things are. Because they still don't know what those are. So um, anyway, uh, that is it for this vlog. We're going on uh, 19 minutes here, so we got to cut it short. Um, and then, of course, they want to decipher the, the poem as well. Um, let me know what you guys think about the, uh, the use of uh, props and stuff uh, as a DM. Do you think it's a waste of time? Do you think it's a waste of money? Do you think, it's, uh, do you think it adds something to, as a player? Do you enjoy that? Um, I'd really like to get your feedback. So uh, that said, we'll catch you guys on the flip side.